George Floyd. When we hear his name, most of us can't help but think of the last eight minutes and 46 seconds of his life. Seeing his murder on video at the hands of a Minneapolis police officer forced many people to have the painful conversations that so many people were avoiding. Conversations about racism, about police brutality, about the dehumanization of black people in America. It was a video that literally changed the world. But George Floyd was more than that video. And I know it seems obvious, but George Floyd had an entire life before those final moments. He had friends, high school classmates, aunties, uncles, a mother, and children. And looking beyond his death is what makes Post Reports, the life of George Floyd, so powerful. In this hour-long podcast from the team at the Washington Post, we get to hear George Floyd speak. We hear his voice. We hear the voices of his family and friends. We hear the story of the mother he called out for. Because you can't tell George Floyd's story without telling his family's story. And you can't tell his family's story without telling the story of systemic racism in America. This reporting takes us on a journey from slavery to sharecropping in North Carolina's tobacco fields to Houston's housing projects and the criminalization of addiction and how one man's life was shaped by these structural forces that existed even before he was born. It's the story of not just a man, but a family that tried to live the American dream in the 19th, 20th, and 21st century and was knocked down at every turn. So now, when I hear the name George Floyd, I don't think of a death, I think of his life, what it was and what it could have been. And of course, I've heard his name so many times, chanted at so many protests over the last four months, and I've seen his face everywhere. But I haven't actually heard him. And it feels like that embodies one part of the tragedy of George Floyd's death. There is the tragedy of how he died, the horrible image of a police officer kneeling on his neck. There's the tragedy of what his death represents, so many other unarmed Black Americans killed by police, and the system of racial injustice that allows it to happen. Hi, I'm Martine Powers, the host of Post Reports at The Washington Post. I'm here in my closet where we have been recording the podcast for the last year during the pandemic. Um, I just want to start by saying thank you so much for this award. We are honored to receive it, and we're honored to tell the story of the life of George Floyd. I think it's really easy to think about him as a symbol at the center of a movement, but we wanted to tell the story of who he was and who his family was, his dreams, his ambitions, the obstacles that got thrown in his way. And so to start with, we're just so grateful to the friends and family of George Floyd who were incredibly generous with their time and attention in helping to let us tell this story right. And I wanna thank so many producers, editors, and reporters at the Washington Post who collaborated collaborated extensively on this story. The Post Reports team, Ted Muldoon, who was dedicated to the story and in getting this powerful, profound tape, Lena Muhammad, who made it possible for the story to end up in its beautiful final form, Maggie Penman, who advocated for this at every turn, so many people on Post Reports who contributed in countless ways, and also reporters Aurelise Hernandez, Tolu Olurunipa, and Robert Samuels, who were generous with their reporting insights and expertise and their voices, and so many other who made this story possible. I I think that the thing that we love about audio as a medium is its intimacy. And so if we were able to help some people feel a little bit closer to the person at the center of this movement, then we are really grateful for the opportunity to do that and we're grateful to the people who listened. So thank you. 